اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي so insha Allah ta'ala today we're going to be looking at the system of rabb for the sustenance of human being as in the process of producing the offsprings of adam alayhi salam so adam alayhi salam and hawa alayhi salam were sent down on the planet earth and a new process of production came into existence and that is that when these two individual will going to meet in a certain fashion the next entity will going to come into existence so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about two main things here one is called cellular division and the other one is called the physical appearance so there is things happening at a cell level at a molecular level and there are things happen in the outward appearance So first of all we're going to be looking at what science says mitotic division in uterus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we created Adam in stages and the offsprings in stages. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word once again for the offsprings of Adam, ya ayyuhan nas, o people, ittaqu have taqwa in your heart. Rabbukum for your rabbakum alladhi who khalaqakum who created you. Min nafsin wahid. He created you from a single life cell. So the idea of nafs wahid. Nafs wahid. Wahid means one. Nafs here. These people who have done tafsir in these times have done it as a single life cell. Versus the people in the past who said a single soul. Now, the idea of single cell life came into Surah An-Nisa. Ayah number one. And this is ayah number one of the surah. In Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expresses this idea, وَهُوَ الَّذِي He is the one. Now in the first ayah, what was the word? خَلَقَكُمْ Means created. Now notice there is a change of word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدٍ خَلَقَكُمْ and أَنْشَأَكُمْ Khalaqakum means created you in stages over a process. We know it's a nine-month process, which is a process of evolution. And then in that process and afterwards, ansha'akum means gave you a growth. So there is a growth aspect, and then there is a creation aspect. It all starts with a single cell life, and it starts going through a process where it's a human form, comes out, and the growth keeps continuing to a certain extent, and then starts deteriorating after that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about both of these stages which will going to be the starting point. In Surah Al-Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combines both of these ideas and says, مَا خَلَقَكُمْ وَلَا بَعْثَكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسٍ وَاحِدٍ We have not created you and we will not going to again create you in another time but from a single self. So since we have created you from single cell, we will going to reproduce you again from a single cell. That single cell has your code, which is your DNA, which is you, which is your social security number. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to reproduce from that idea. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the two stages. But before I get into that, I would like to also talk about one more thing. In these times, in the modern anatomy, we have this terminology called fertilized ovium or a concept of a zygote, which is being explained by ulama because, you know, they have only made so much progress in anatomy. That explanation of a nafsin wahida means the single cell life is basically the zygote. The idea of a zygote is a single cell life. We'll explain zygote in a little bit more detail in just a minute. Then the two stages Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in Surah Al-Dahr. إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِيهِ So indeed we have created the human being from what? From a mingled fluid. I'll tell you, explain to you what a mingled fluid means. From a mingled fluid. And then... We have taken that human being through several stages. Nabtalihi. Nabtali means it is in the state of changing. So it changes and changes and changes. And then it takes a form. فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا 
basira, and then it reaches a state where it is able to listen and it is able to hear. Now that is the growth point of a baby in the mother wombs when it is able to conceive information from outside. But prior to that, there are so many stages which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. We take it from a stage to a stage to a stage. Still it develops those senses. Okay, now when we talk about a mingled fluid, which is basically the idea which is expressed in several different stages itself. Quran, first of all, talks about uh, a fertilizing fluid in one of the ayahs of the Quran, which is commonly understood as sperm. But sperm itself comes from... Semen. Semen, exactly. So there is an ayah of the Quran which combines both of these ideas. أَلَمْ يَكُنْ نُطْفَةً مِّمْ مَنِيٍّ يُمْنَى Did he not produce this sperm from the semen? So nutfa and mani, both ideas are there. Yumna, that means, yumna means something that falls. So it ejaculates and it falls from one body and it falls from another body, and the combination of the two starts the reproduction cycle when the two reaches a certain point. So which will be also talked about. Okay, now another, the next stage that is being talked about, about the sperm or spermatic fluid, is being talked about, مَا إِن دَافِقْ This is Surah Al-Tariq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقْ Have the human being not thought about what the human being has been created out of? خُلِقَ مِمَّا إِن دَافِقْ We have created it from a liquid that is poured out. Which is poured out. يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبْ Now this is a very very big debate now was never the case before. The reason is we did not have understanding of this process before. In the previous tafasir, whenever or the translations, when you look at the word sulb and taraib, it is generally understood as the parts of the body, which is the chest bone and the back, from where the water comes and mingles. However, there is much more explanation to that process which can now be done now. The reason is, in Arabic language, turab is one word, but there is a word called tarbiya, which is the chest bone. And what is turab? Turab is your rib cage that holds this chest bone. Okay? So taraib is a singular, is a plural, and tarbiya is the singular of that. Okay, so this is your taraib. That is why, because the word taraib in Arabic language means this rib cage and the bone, that's why they've translated as the upper part of the woman's body is from where these fluids come out. But according to the modern science, sulb is called the sacrum. And taraib is the symphysis pubis, which is um, your hip joints, from where your hips are joined. So, so instead of taking all the way up there, it's a whole process which starts from the top of your body and comes down. Everything is connected. So this fluid comes through the process. So it's, 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 and then, and then it's, uh, I'm going to try to use as less as medical terminologies as possible. And then it goes into the next form, which is in Surah Al-Sijda, مَاءٍ مَهِينٍ ثُمَّ جَعَلَ نَسْلَهُ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ مَاءٍ مَهِينٍ This is the despised liquid. And he made the offspring of Adam from semen of male and the discharge of the female. So that's what basically مَاءٍ مَهِينٍ means. It's a despised liquid. In the next stage, in the next stage, before I take you into, into the next stage, the ulama of these times have said, when we talk about ma'in mahin, it means it's an extract of the liquids or the fluids coming from both sources, which hold the nutrients and other entities from both sources to come together and transfer it over. So there are certain traits that move on from the parents over to the kids. So that has a lot of things. For example, you might have noticed that in the same household there are two babies, but one is extremely healthy and the other one is thin. Some have certain features and some have certain features. Some have certain kind of appetite, some have certain kind of appetite. Some have certain kind of a brains and some certain kind of a brain. The thought processes are different and things of that note. And then the next state is called Nutlufatin Amshad, mixtures or mingled liquids. 
inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshaj we created the human beings from the mingled fluid so it's a mixture that comes from several secretions so because of several secretions that happen in your body this thing that you call sperm or semen comes about so it is not a single entity by itself it comprises of many secretions from all your body for that very reason ulama have said that maybe this is the hikmah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when you discharge a semen or when you do an intercourse you are now bound and required to do the shower because what you ejected came through a process of several secretions that happen all over your body so that is why the cleansing of the entire body should be done on the contrary when you pee that is not the case so since it circumvents in all your body through several different processes therefore the entire body should be cleansed even though it comes from one source but it has visited several different parts of your body so as a result this happens it's comprised of several other secretions and then ulama have put together the two things that these secretions happen from these glands testicle glands seminal vessels prostate glands and glands of urinary tract so these are the four main components from these they come from next they go into the fertilized ovum and said that is also divided into two stages and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the quran that all men and, and women are created due to this division now i'm not going to go in details of this mitotic division you probably will be able to understand and tell us a lot more better but the idea of a single life cell is there that's that's the core so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah az-zumr khalaqakum min nafsin wahid i created you from a single cell life thumma ja'ala min ha zawjaha so adam was created from a single cell life and then from adam hawa was created so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say thumma ja'ala min ha from that single cell i created what zawjaha his wife his pair was created from that single cell life so both were part of the single cell life one was the source one was the core the other was the byproduct okay now in another ayah in surah an-nisa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says khalaqakum min nafsin wahid i created you from single cell life wa khalaqa minha zawjaha from the single cell life i created the pa- partner and what happened after that wa batha minhuma and from the merger of the two what did i do rijalan kathira wa nisa i created several men and several women so created a single cell created adam from it from adam created hawa and now a new process of reproduction started at the merger of the two i now reproduce several men and several women so the, there are four different phases of mitotic division uh, prophase metaphase anaphase and and telophase we're not going to go in detail in, in these but we're going to mainly talk about this single cell life which has the process of uh, mitosis and and prior to that is meiosis right the, the ovum and the sperm meet it the, when they fuse with one another is just one cell then okay they merge completely they merge completely and then that is called zygote zygote okay the ovum for sperm and the zygote and then mitosis Mice- and, and meiosis started cell division <clears throat> the cell division take place so so in the uterus the ovum and the sperm mix right and this is where this the implantation of eggs right implantation of the egg take place so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about this process of egg in surah al-hajj wa nuqirru fil arham ma nasha'u ila ajalin musamma that we take whatever goes in the womb of the mom and then we keep it there for a certain amount of time and then further says when things start what is the original form iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq خلق الانسان من علق علق is the form where as you said that this one cell that one egg which is coming from outside and one entity which is inside this outside coming guy clings or hangs to this inside entity and then once this clinging happens what happens this ovum now puts a little membrane on top 
which hides any more sperms to come and stick to it. So, because at any given time, when a sperm enter into the body of a, man, of a woman, we're talking about 40, 400 million of them. So, 400 million babies each can time. be produced. Each time. Each time. Each time, 400 million babies can be produced if each egg that comes from the men attaches to an egg in the woman. So, as soon as they <laughs> cling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just closes the entry point and that's it. Whoever made it this far will now going to be reproduced, rested, goes to waste, comes out. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, min alaq, from the clinging, uh, which is hanging. And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ and when it has come to that point of clinging, it stays there. It is a place which is a safe heaven. Because it is clinging, and on top there is a membrane, it is protective. So now it is in the protective mode. So over the period of time, what happens, this hanging thing converts into the next form. So this sperm is now chained into an alaqa, a hanging position. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the seven stages of the creation of us. Adam, seven stages we dealt with last week. What are our seven stages? The first stage was the creation of Adam. Because that is an extremely important stage in our creation. If there was no Adam and no Hawa, there would be no us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَخَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن سُلَالَةٍ مِن طِينَ we, we understood this process last time. That سُلَالَةٌ مِن طِينَ means that طِينَ is the clay. سُلَالَةٌ مِن طِينَ means it's a refined extract of the clay from where Adam was created. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then after that, there are six stages that you go through. Number one, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً مِنْ قَرَاءٍ فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ We take your sperm and, and put it in, in connection with the ovium and in the membrane, we just put you in the safe mode. ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً Then that nutfa goes into a clinging, hanging state of alaqa. فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْغَةً Then that alaqa changes into a form of a lumpy meat, which is like a chewed meat. And then what happened? فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَةَ عِظَامًا And then we take you from this form into your skeletal system. So right now you're in the lump state. So then we take you from your lump state into your skeletal system state. فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ لَحْمًا And then what we do is we take your skeletal system and put your muscular system on top of it. And, and ثُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخر. And then we take that muscular state and create you however we wish to create you. Okay. So these stages are happening where? Inside the mother's womb. And فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ Indeed, Allah is the best of all the producers. And this, these are the seven stages as I talked about. سُلَالَةٌ مِّن طِينَ نُطْفَ عَلَقَ So sperm, alaqa is the hanging mass. Mudra is a chewed lump. عِظَام, skeletal system. Laham, muscular system. And خَلْقًا akhar is the new creation that is coming as a result of this final product. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Sijda, ثُمَّ سَوَّاهُ وَنَفَخَ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ When it reaches a certain point, this is the time when I ask my angels to go and put the soul inside the baby. So, ثُمَّ سَوَّاهُ وَنَفَخَ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ And then after that, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفِدَةِ Now that there's a soul in there, now I give that soul a capability to be able to listen, to be able to see and to be able to think. Okay? To be able to think. 
Now that is why, now it's been proven now that there were so many researches, I remember in 1990s that was done and it was broadcasted on BBC that how we can train a baby in mother's womb because it is on the receiving end. We want this baby when it comes out to be trained in a certain fashion. So they were doing some extensive research back in 1990s on that, but it is a tradition that we have experienced and listened from ulama over the period of time that your thought process, like a mom's thought process, and a mom's environment should be the best possible that you can when the baby's in the womb, because the psychology of the baby is getting developed. So if the mom is going through some psychological pressures, is going through some hardships, that is getting transferred over. Okay? Now, we do not understand a lot of these things in certain societies and certain cultures where this, this mom or to be mom goes through a lot of hardships and this is emotional hardships, not physical hardships where people are taunting, giving her a her hard time, making her do things which is against her will. As a result, whose psychology is getting affected? The child who's about to come in. The child will come in with that psychology. The child will going to come out and until Allah wishes otherwise with certain traits. So that is why it is extremely important that these women must give their to be born child the best psychological treatment that they can by controlling their own thought processes. And it is a duty of a husband to provide her wife with the best possible environment that he can so that she is least affected because the effect will go to the next generation. It's an extremely important component. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is why we give this person an ability to, to listen, to be ability to see, and to be ability to think. Okay? قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ But the problem is, you guys are not thankful enough means, we human beings. إِنَّ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ We created human being from a mingled fluid. نَبْتَلِيهِ And then we kept changing its form inside the mother's womb, as the seven forms I talked about. فَجَعَ اللَّهُ سَمِعًا بَصِيرًا And it was all listening and all seeing. So do not think the mother's womb baby doesn't respond. So there are a lot of work that has been done by, I have read some of the work of Dr. Keith Moore, who has done a tremendous amount of work um, of, of bringing uh, embryology and bringing the Qur'an and Islam together, as he was shared the ayahs from the Holy Qur'an by his friend. So he does a tremendous amount of work in this area. So um, his book is out there, you know, if you, if you really, really want to understand it in a lot more detail. Then he talks about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an says that we have created three curtains, three curtains in which we keep the baby. And, and science in these days, days have given names to those curtains. First I'm going to tell you the ayah in Surah Al-Zumr. يَخْلُخُكُمْ فِي بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ We have created you in the wombs of your mothers خَلْقًا مِّن بَعْدِ خَلْقٍ and we have taken you from one stage into another stage فِي ظُلُمَاتِ ثَلَاثِ in three curtains of darkness so they're inside it's all dark no lights can see so through the process of ultrasound you're able to see things by doing by casting certain rays and reflecting those back to be able to see what's going on, but it's all dark inside. Yet in the darkness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nourishing a newborn. <laughs> this is how your Lord is and everything belongs to Him. La ilaha illahu. There is no God to be worshipped but Him. Where exactly are you guys going then? Because those are microscopic elements. What are those three walls? The science says there are three wheels of darkness. There is a name to each wheel. There is an interior abdominal wall. There is a uterine wall. And then for the third one, there are two names I've found. One is called the amniocryonic membrane, and the other one is extra embryonic membrane. The placenta. Placenta. And, and amnion. And the amnion. Yeah. So these are the three wheels the of fluids, darkness. There are fluids in all of those. 
all the shock absorber. In all three of them, there are fluids. Yes, the shock absorber. The, the, the fetus is very well protected that way. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. The protein in the water, like sunni. Wow. And so, I mean, there's an extensive amount of research that was done by Dr. Keith Moore. And he tells us, he gives, he gives credit. He says, the translation of the verses from the Quran, which I have used... I was provided by Sheikh Abdul Majid Zindani, a professor of Islamic studies in King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And then he talks about the verses of the Quran in his work. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He makes you in the womb of your moms in stages one after another in three wheels of darkness. And this statement is from Surah 39. We do not know, he says, Dr. Keith Moore says, we do not know when it was realized that human beings underwent development in uterus, but the first known illustration was not done until 15th century. So only 500 years ago, we came to know about the illustration through Leonardo da Vinci. Prior to Leonardo da Vinci, this was like unbelievable stuff because forget it, like nobody knew about it, what's going on in the mother's womb. And there was a time frame of good 900 years between the revelation of the Qur'an and the illustration of Da Vinci. So, he says it's unbelievable that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained all of these concepts so awesomely in the Qur'an and made it so easy for the people. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Zumr says, يَخْلُقُكُمْ فِي بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ خَلْقًا مِّن بَعْدِ خَلْقٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ ثَلَاثِ the three stages that I take you through, the three walls that I talked about. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينَ I also talked about this idea that this, this particular sperm goes out and clings itself in a protective place. And then the stages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Mu'min, ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُطْغَةً So the things that I talked about, the skeletal system, the muscular systems and things like that. Uh, um, let me move on to the next stage. This is a, a beautiful ayah from Surah Al Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لكم. So, in certain stages, you are going to notice that um, certain components of your body are more visible. But then in other stages, they are under development. So in one stage, you look at this, you look at an entity and say, okay, this developmentally looks complete. But this completion is only a beginning point for the next stage. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then moves on and says, وَنُقِرُّ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ مَا نَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّىٰ then, however we want, however much we want, we keep you in different states within the mother's womb. And for whatever time we want, we keep you there. And then we take you through the process. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, وَخَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَقَدَّرَهُ تقديرا. Only I know how long to keep you where. That is why if you notice, even in these days, 100% you cannot say when the baby will be born. Sometimes the baby comes a month early. Sometimes comes two months early. We have seen baby come out two and a half months early. Premature. Stays in the hospital till they stay in a mature state to be moved to the home level. Sometimes babies are born a few days after the due date. So we know a time frame, but we can't really say. But he knows exactly when to the billionth of a second when the baby shall arrive in this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah the Abbas, Min ayy shay'in khalaqa. Have you ever noticed what have I created you from a single drop, which is a microscopic drop? Min nutfa. خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَ Not only I created you, but I proportioned you well. I gave you two arms, two legs, two eyes, two ears, one nose, one mouth, one neck. I gave you things in proportion. Everybody has that same proportion. ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَ Then I made things easier for you. When you could not feed yourself in the mother's womb, I made things easier for you that you were fed. When you came out, you still could not feed yourself, so I gave you certain emotions to express yourself so that you are fed. 
Then when you grew up, I gave you means to sustain. But when you grow old, I gave you alternate means to sustain. And then there will going to be a time, ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَقْبَرَ Then when a person dies, you put the person down in the grave. ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ شَرَى Whenever his Lord will wish, will resurrect him back. Only he knows when he will going to resurrect the person back from the death. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about four different stages when we talk about a human being. One is called the stage, stage of creation. Another one is called the stage of tasbih or arrangement. Another stage is called the stage of estimation. And the last is called the stage of guidance. If you look at any human being around, goes through these four stages. <clears throat> There's a creation of a being. Then there is an arrangement of the physical components and the non-physical components. His entire life is arranged for him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there is an estimation how much to give, how long this person will live, and how well this person shall serve. And then there is a guidance. There is a stage of guidance. Now it is up to the individual to take however much he or she wants, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides all of these things to us. That's why in Surah Al-A'la Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sabbih ismi rabbika al-a'la. Say the tasbih of the Lord who is the highest. Alladhi khalaqa. He created you and then what did he do? Fasawa. He guided you and he gave you sustenance. He gave you a proportion. Walladhi qaddara. So after he gave you an estimation. Fahada. He guided you. So all four stages are being talked about. Khalaqa. He created you. Fasawa. He arranged you. وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ He estimated you and فَهَدَى He guided you. So all four stages are being talked about in the Qur'an in one place. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mursalat says, أَلَمْ نَخْلُقْكُمْ مِنْ مَاءٍ مَهِينٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ إِلَىٰ قَدَرٍ مَعْلُومٍ فَقَدَرْنَا فَنِعْمَ الْقَادِرُونَ We created you from what? From a mixed fluid. From the mingled fluid. And then we kept that fluid and the entire process in a very secure place for a known time. فَقَدَرْنَا We are the one who make time. We are the one. We are not responsible. We are responsible but we are not bound by anybody else's time. فَنِعْمَ الْقَادِرُونَ We are the one who is responsible and the controller of the time frame. We keep whoever we want to keep, whenever we want to keep, for however we want to keep. Now there are two words. The talk come in Surah Al-An'am which requires some explanation. وَهُوَ الَّذِي He is the one أَنْشَأَكُمْ Give you a growth مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدٍ From a single cell life. فَمُسْتَقَرٌ وَمُسْتَوْدَعٌ Now those are the two words I want to talk about because we did not talk about those two things. مُسْتَقَرٌ means keeping somebody in a certain state in the same place. So whenever through the process of creation an entity is in a certain state it stays in that developmental state in the same place till it goes into the next state. So what is the next state? The next state is mustauda. Then what do we do? We make you spend time in a certain place and then we transfer you over into the next state. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about both items in the same ayah. Mustaqar wa mustauda. We keep you in a state we take care of your nourishment and then we change you into the next state, then keep you in that state, go through the process of nourishment, take you into the next state. So we do that. Qad Why did we give you all these signs? So that you may think about those things that we have given you. So in the process, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does three things. He goes through a process of equalization, personification, and, methodot, and a methodical formation. What are those three states Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in Surah Al-Infitab? That, O oh man, why are you being deceived? And what are you being deceived of? الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ فَسَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَكَ He is the one who created you. He is the one who gave you all the proportions. فَعَدَلَكَ And gave you the best possible form. And then fi ayi sura timma And then he created whatever features he wanted to give you. 
He gave you whatever color he wanted to give you. He gave you whatever height he wanted to give you. He gave you however many hair he wanted to give you. The hair color, the eye color, the size of the ears. The ear lobes, if you know, they're extremely unique for every individual. Even your ears are extremely important. That's why they are also used in biometrics. So are your pupils. So are your fingerprints. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each one of us a unique trait. You will going to see two identical twins. To you they may be identical, but they're not 100% identical. There is some difference in them. Apparently they appear identical. But there is some difference in them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we create however we want to create. And remember your mom. فَحَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهَا The mom took that baby in her womb and went through a very hard process. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes the harshness and the hard process that she goes through. Kurha. Wada'athu kurha. And she gave birth to you and it was not easy on her either. Wahamaluhu wa fisaluhu thalathuna shahra. And the process of she bearing you and the process of she nursing you is 30 months. 30 months. So out after the first three, uh, after the first trimester of the delivery, the six months, the real six months of production, plus the twenty-four months of nursing. So notice when are we talking? This was revealed fourteen hundred years ago. The trimesters were not known to man, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala started picking up the growth after the first trimester and took it all the way to the end where the baby turns two years old. Shahra, 30 months you are being fed and being taken care by this individual that is your mom. So what did we do for you? We did four things for you and this is where we're going to end today, tonight. We provide you with nourishment. Throughout this process we provide you with nourishment. Then on top of that we provided you with protection as we were talking about that each curtain has fluids in them and there is a shock absorbent in there. So we protected you. And then on top of that, if you notice, baby is not stationary in the mom's womb. It's constantly moving. And there, is, there comes a time when it actually kicks. It kicks and she feels it. So, and so, so think about it. Somebody is moving in your stomach. It's not, it's not easy feeling. If you have ever been f- felt bloated, you have no idea what she goes through. So... There is a movement going on, and and there is there are certain cases where the uh, the is it the umbilical cord that wraps around the neck, and that creates a very very severe problem. We have to do a surgery to take the baby out. Sometimes they die in that state if they're not addressed properly. So we take care of your movement in the mother's womb, and on top of that, this is the one that I love the most. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "We also control the temperature." Don't think about it. If it gets too hot, earlier in the stage, the cells will die out. If it gets too cold, they will freeze. And throughout the stages of development inside mother's womb, temperatures are controlled to an extent that the nourishment and the growth is not affected negatively, rather positively. So this, these are the stages... Last week we talked about the seven stages Adam alayhi salam went through. So today I wanted to talk about the seven stages the children of Adam alayhi salam goes through before they come in this world. And why are we talking about this? Because of the word in Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That is his Rabbness, his Rabb quality. That is why we're talking about these things to understand that Rabb, that what He does for us and how much He does for us. And we will continue to work a little bit more on the idea of Rabb next time where we talk about the different forces within us which are physical and spiritual that are given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to be guided and sustained in this world. And then we will going to talk about the word Al-Alameen. That what exactly the Alameen means. Because these are, if you understand the word Alameen in Rabbul Alameen, 
you will also be able to understand when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh Prophet, we send you as a mercy for alameen. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ So if you understand his aspect of mercy, you understand how, how chosen people we are to be from his ummah, to be from the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there is an extreme amount of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. Otherwise, if you have a chance, go and read the jurisprudence of the people before us, the people of the book. There are some very, very harsh rulings on certain subject matter that have been eased out for us. They could not pray anywhere but in the masjid. It was forbidden for them to pray anywhere. They have to physically go to the masjid to pray. For us, the entire world is masjid. We pray wherever there is a clean place we find. We can pray. If we were bounded by that, think about it. After coming from our own countries to this land, we could not have been prayed until we would have established a masjid first. Nobody could pray. Because of that ruling that you cannot pray until there is a masjid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been extremely blessed on us and has made things, a lot of things much easier for this ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to give us better leaders who can guide us through this process. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, good leaders are extremely important for the sustenance of everybody. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, over 70% of every one of us, our body is nothing but water. It's water, exactly. Amazing. And then we are solids. Yeah. <laughs> maybe just even more. Maybe just even more. A brain, a lot of water in brain. Wow. And without water, nobody can use And you know when the mother sometimes premature birth, if the water breaks, the protective layer, the sac contains water to protect as a shock absorber. And if the water breaks, then the baby will not survive. <coughs> they have to use labor to deliver the baby. They cannot. If the water breaks, the baby is in immediate danger. And if the placenta is left inside, then the mom is in danger. Yes, yes, yes. The same placenta that was used as a nourishment for baby you, is a poison about, for mom. You, you talk about rahim is the Arabic word for uterus. Uterus. That's a rahim is compassion, love. Mm. 